going on guys welcome back to tactical talks so in this video we're going to be talking about two different arm braces for uh, AR pistols so the first thing I wanted to do was show you guys that have not seen my AR pistol this is the current state that it's in right now now I am going to change out this Magpul AFG2 um, not that I don't like it but as I've had this thing I've slowly been upgrading different things uh, change the light out to the Olight so this is the let's see PL2 Valkyrie I used to have that on a pistol well technically this is a pistol I used to have it on a traditional pistol and then decided that I wanted it on here because of how compact it was and uh, I really didn't need it on the other pistol I ended up going to a uh, TLR1 on the other pistol that I had it on but anyways so we've been slowly making changes getting this thing kind of dialed into exactly where I want it so with that being said <coughs> excuse me one of the things that I wanted to do was upgrade my brace at least it's an upgrade to me so I'm gonna be talking to you guys about which brace should you buy or at least give you a little bit of comparability between the uh, SB tactical I think this is the SB 3 or something I have to look that up. I'm not 100% sure. But the SB3 compared to the CAC Shockwave Blade. So I'll let you guys know why I went with the blade and why I'm changing from the blade. And uh, if you guys have any questions about this, comment down below and I'll let you guys know what we have going on. So first things first, for those of you safety freaks out there, the gun is clear, no magazine inserted, nothing in the chamber. So we are good to go. So what I want to talk to you guys about as far as pistol braces go is there's a couple different things that I look for as far as when I'm looking for gun parts the biggest biggest thing that I'm looking for is reliability I want to make sure that any and everything that I buy is gonna last whether it's a twenty dollar part or if it's a hundred dollar part I want to make sure everything that I have lasts. I don't want to spend any money on something that I know is just gonna break so when I was first looking into getting a pistol brace I looked at the shockwave blade one I saw everything online and I saw that this was reliable the other big thing for me as far as what comes second is price I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I kind of thrown a bunch of money into this pistol all at once to get this thing built so that I can go out and start shooting it I don't like having projects sitting around too long so I thought okay let's get all the parts that I like and then as, I, as time goes on, then I'll slowly start upgrading. So with that being said, I bought the CAC Industries Shockwave Blade. Now this thing has been amazing. I've had no issues with it. However, some of the things that I wanted to kind of go over and talk to you guys about was the, the use on this thing. Uh, and again, like I said, there's, there's nothing wrong with this thing. But the use on this thing for me just... It just wasn't there. I feel like this could be better. Now, I get the idea behind the product. It looks cool. You have a couple little sling mounts. You have three little sling mounts right there that loop through here. Um, you know, you can put it in one position, and then you have the little Allen screw to tighten it down. And I, I get the idea behind it, and especially for the price. If you guys are looking for a budget-friendly option, I think anywhere from $30 to $40, you can get this set up right here where it has... A uh, pistol buffer tube with the uh, CAC Industries blade, you know, to go over, tighten it down, put it on your pistol. It looks cool and it's functional. Now, for me, every other buttstock that I have on any of my rifles are, they're all Magpul. You know, they're all adjustable. I'm, I've kind of gotten used to being able to adjust all of my buttstocks. Now, I get that this is not a buttstock. However, this is a pistol brace see if I can get it there we go that is adjustable I like having that feature now I have certain settings that I like shooting in but this is more of a I go to the range I play with this thing this is kind of a home defense gun if somebody else needs to shoot this who has longer arms than me shorter arms whatever the case is they can sit there and adjust this to their liking and get it exactly where they want so that was kind of an added bonus as far as looking into this now I will tell you as far as cost effective and saving money this is not going to be it if you're looking at spending the minimum amount of money possible building your AR pistol this is probably not going to be the brace for you 
This brace originally debuted, I think, at about $150, $160. Now you can find them anywhere between $100 and $120. So that's about what I spent to get this thing. And what I like about this is if you look at this on the top, it's a lot slimmer, which I, I get the reasoning behind. They want to make it lightweight. It's, it's a blade. It's supposed to be nice and thin. But this is a little bit fatter, a little bit wider. So as far as the cheek weld goes, I have a lot more room on this thing than I did on the blade. So that was the first bonus. Second bonus, like I stated, this is adjustable. So that's number two. The third thing is I have a sling mount down here. And this one also comes with the QD mount. So I have options as far as putting a sling in and quick release from this one or this one. Like I stated before, this one has three sling mount options, but you have to loop the sling through and it's not something that you're gonna be able to quick detach from. So that's why I like this one a little bit more. That's number three. The fourth thing, at least for me, is this whole thing is made of, whether it's a polymer or plastic, not 100% sure, but it is a rigid piece of material and like I stated, it's very thin. So when you have this up against you, as you start shooting, this thing starts to dig. Now, it's not like shooting a shotgun. You're not going to get that same amount of recoil. It's not going to hurt so bad that you're not going to want to shoot the weapon. But depending on how many rounds you put through it, it is going to start to wear and tear. And it's going to start digging after a little bit. So what I liked about the SB Tactical is that there is a hard plastic material up top to hold everything in place and this bottom part is more of a rubberized material so there's a little bit of give and a little bit of play into this and I'll tell you two reasons why I like that option option number one for me was when I'm here in my shoulder and I'm shooting it's a little bit softer I don't have to worry about getting a butt pad or anything else crazy like that the way this comes is a little more comfortable for me the second thing that I liked is depending on what kind of training I'm doing, I do have outer vests that I wear, whether it's my police bulletproof vest, I have level three plates and I have level four plates. Depending on what I'm shooting, once I've adjusted this accordingly to ensure that it's where I want it to sit, if I have this a little bit closer into my chest to line up perfect with me, this has a little bit of give around the gear that is on my vest. This one does not. If I put this corner into something, wherever that weapon is sitting it either has a really sharp point of contact or has a flush point of contact but I really couldn't have both with this I can put the corner in and push back and this has enough give that it'll kind of contour around my gear and give me a little bit more stability as far as points of contact go when I'm shooting my weapon so that was another big plus for me now I can tell you as far as arm braces go I, don't, I do not use this as a strap to my arm, arm brace. I'm not a fan of that. Just my personal preference. I don't even remember the, the name of the first SB Tactical one that I saw, but when that thing came out, I thought it was ugly. It was goofy looking. I've never used one. I don't want to use one. I do not see the point in putting my arm inside of this thing and Velcroing it down to my arm to use this thing like it's an extension of my arm. Like That's just not for me. I don't get it. So as far as this goes with the Velcro strap and everything, no, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I do like this look more than I like the Shockwave blade. Just my personal preference. It's, it's different for everybody. But like I stated, it all kind of depends on what you want and what you want to do with that arm brace. Now, the other thing, like I stated, the, the bigger factor in all of this after functionality is price point. Do you want to spend the $30 to $40 to keep it budget friendly? Or are you willing to spend $100 to $120 roughly to get something like this? To some people, this doesn't matter. To some people, as long as there's something on there, they're okay with it. I've also seen people that, you know, they run their pistols with just a tube and sometimes they have just the little uh, foam cover on the back and they're 100% okay with that. I like for my weapons to look and feel good. To me, that looks goofy. I don't like having just the buffer tube on the back, so I wanted something that looked a little bit nicer. Um, like I said, this this has that, that tactical look. To me, it's a little more appealing, and on top of it all, it's functional. So that's what I liked about this thing. That's why I upgraded to this. You know, To me, this just made sense. Now, I didn't buy it up front because, like I stated before, when I bought the pistol, 
I started piecing everything together, started going down the line and putting everything that I put on here. If you guys want to know what's on here, just message me. I'll try to remember and link the video where I talked about all the parts, all the components that are on this pistol. But if I do not remember, just comment down below. Ask me, you know, hey, what part is this? What part is that? And I'm more than happy to comment back and let you know what is on this build. Now, the only thing left to do for me as far as this, like I stated, I am going to change this out. Not 100% sure which angled foregrip I want to go with. It's going to be an angled foregrip, of course, because this is a pistol. And then after that, we may start thinking about changing the internals. I All of my ARs have mil-spec triggers. All of my Glocks have upgraded triggers. So I started thinking, well, why don't I upgrade the triggers in my ARs the way I do on my Glocks? And I really don't have an answer for that. I just haven't done it yet. I haven't shot them yet. I've heard fanta fantastic things about so many different triggers. Um, I'm not going to get through the listing of them. I've heard so many good things about other triggers for AR. So I think that may be something that's coming down the line. Upgrading the trigger in here and seeing, you know, how I like it, if I like it, and if that's something I want to start doing to my other ARs, whether that's rifles or pistols. So if you guys have any questions as far as these arm braces go, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Which one do you like better? Like I said, I've been liking this one. I've been eyeing this one for a while. I just had to bring myself to spending the $100 for an arm brace. But like I stated, for all the reasons that I talked about, this thicker cheek weld, adjustability, um, the little bit of give in the back, more cushion there, the QD mount. I mean, there's just, for me, there was a lot of things that went into the thought process of why I want this and the reasoning and the you know, kind of convincing myself that this was worth the money. Now, I have not gone out and shot this. So when I actually go out and shoot this, I'll have a little bit more information as far as updating you guys on was this the right decision. As of right now, I think yes. We'll see if that stays the same. And we'll kind of just go from there. But like I said, if you guys have any questions, comment down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Every Friday, I put out a Tactical Talks video. I've already got next week's video filmed, so they're going to keep coming, and I'm going to try to put out more content for you guys as we go along. My 1,000 subscriber giveaway is coming very soon. I've been finishing getting everything together. It's going to be a pretty, pretty significant giveaway. So the last giveaway I did, not a lot of people responded to that. So just make sure if you guys are watching this video in a timely manner, once I put out when the giveaway is going to be, Comment, do whatever I ask you guys to do as far as, you know, what you need to do in order to enter the giveaway. Because I'm telling you right now, not a lot of people are entering these, which is fine. It just makes your guys' odds even better as far as winning that giveaway and getting a bunch of free stuff. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.